What's the crack lads? Welcome to our position training tutorial where we're going to be showing you how to give new positions to cards and also why I feel that this feature needs to be fixed in the future update. All right, boys, so I'm going to go straight into it. No waffle. We wanted to save up and do this tutorial when we had a load of position trainers to show you a lot of examples. So from the main player page, we're going to navigate to position training and that is going to be the page here that you're seeing. You can choose any player, whatever player that you have. We're choosing Jack Wilshire. And once you press triangle on the PlayStation or else Y on an Xbox pad, you are going to have your acquirable position. So this is all you really need to know. Whatever guide comes up here, whatever acquirable position is up on screen in front of you for whatever player you choose, that is the position that that player will be able to acquire or else become max proficiency in, okay? So we get slot one, that's going to open up slot two. The only way slot one will open up or slot two will open up is when you use slot one. So we actually get lucky enough here and train Jack Wiltshire in a position that he doesn't even have half proficiency in. It's a brand new position that we're going to be creating for Jack Wiltshire to be able to play. And it goes from blank to light green, faded green. We still have CMF, AMF and DMF as max proficiency, which is bright green. But the faded green is a brand new position that we can now go over to slot two from the acquirable positions. We're not going to be able to, you know, get a token here and, you know, train Jack Wiltshire as a goalkeeper or a CF. Any position that's on the acquirable position guide, which you press triangle or Y on the Xbox, triangle on the PlayStation, that will tell you what positions you can actually spin with the tokens that you have here. So we've got one token left from this page. Are we going to get lucky enough? We can override it if we want, but are we going to get lucky enough and actually spin left midfielder again in slot two? We are. We're going to get that posi position proficiency fully now acquired, right? So you do need two slots to be filled up if the player doesn't be, isn't able to play in that position originally. So Jack Wilshire is able to play left midfielder and right midfielder by acquiring it, but by default, he's only able to play AMF, CMF, and DMF. So bright green is going to be max proficiency, faded green is going to be half proficiency, and then blank is going to be no proficiency at all. This only affects really the overall of the player. If you're using sub tactics, you can still toss Jack Wilshire as a right winger. He's still going to have his stats and stuff. It'll just be visually that his rating will be, you know, plummeting, okay? So now we've maxed out Jack Wilshire. We're going to go down and show you that he does have his additional position proficiency added here. Two slots taken up, which is the max that you can do. And that's going to be a left midfielder, okay? And that's going to be kind of what you see here. You'll see here that... As I said, his position proficiency now will mean that he can stay playing left midfield. If you move him to right midfield, which we don't have trained, it'll plummet down to 68 overall. This is also really handy. The more acquirable positions, the bigger the risk or the bigger, you know, the, the odds are um, that you're going to spin a position that you don't want. Whereas with somebody like Theo Hernandez, who's down as a left back, he can actually be trained as a CB, even though he's blank. He doesn't have any proficiency in CB until now, when we give him a, when we give him one here, okay, so we're going to have a 50-50 chance now of really getting left midfielder fully trained up, or CB fully trained up, if you get a duplicate left back, you will take the skill, it will take the position token, but it won't give you anything, it won't give you anything at all, we'll get into that towards the end of the video, but we actually do fill the two slots, similar to Jack Wilshire, we get the two slots filled again, and his acquirable positions, the only one else is left midfielder. This is kind of a bit of a nine uh, one because if you've got a player like Nkunku, look how many acquirable positions Nkunku has. He can play from center forward all the way to right back, DMF, CMF, LMF. He has max in some of them. So you've got literally Teo Hernandez who can only have three acquirable positions compared to 10 with Nakunku. So it is kind of frustrating that way. I think it's kind of an oversight with this mechanic because obviously if you want Nakunku to be able to play all up front, you want him as a right winger or you want him as a you know center forward, you're going to have to burn a lot of these tokens as you see here. We had to get through three to get our right winger. And that's the same for every player. It doesn't matter what one that you do. Again, Bellingham is a really good example as well. Still one of the best cards in the game, this free Bellingham from way back when. A, a beastly card. If we want to train up and look at all his acquirable positions from SS to DMF and everything in between that in midfield, he can play as a winger and he can play as a CB or a fullback, but everything else he can. So we can spin any of these in our pursuit of making him an SS, which I think is a good position for him with the build we have. We spin one here, we're going to get a right midfielder. So that half proficiency now becomes max proficiency. So we've actually got lucky enough there and went from faded green, which is half proficiency, 
to bright green, which is max proficiency. If we want to take up slot number two, we get center midfielder. That's going to be a duplicate as well. So that is the problem with this system and that a lot of people are getting frustrated with it. I can understand it. I'll talk about it towards the end of the video in about a minute, but that is kind of an issue with it. It's very similar to the skill training. So this is the mechanic that they have in the skill training as well. Now we get probably the biggest bit of luck ever here. Watch, watch this here with the skills when you're trying to make a video to show duplicate skills. What happens? We get every single skill. I had to leave this clip in, lads. We get every single skill as an additional skill. I'd say the odds of that happening are extremely rare and good skills as well. But to show you the point, right, this is the very same system with the duplicates and not refreshing it. If you do actually spin a skill or a player uh, position proficiency that you already have, it will, it will just take the token from you and not give you anything. It's a duplicate. So he already possesses the skill or the position. It won't add it to it. So for example, here with Neymar, right wing forward, beautiful. We're able to play as a right wing forward with Neymar. That's fantastic. We only use one skill trainer and he now has the full proficiency in right winger. But for Songkras in here, if we go left wing, it's going to take the token and not give us anything. The same way with attacking midfielder, take the token and not give us anything. So yeah, I genuinely think that I can see where they're going with this. They obviously want people to be able to have some sort of ecosystem where people aren't just able to go in and turn a player into a specific position or make an attacking midfielder an SS without that little bit of randomness in it or a bit of a lottery effect to it. But hopefully that tutorial actually helps you out, answers a couple of questions, the do's and the don'ts. If it did, don't forget to subscribe. On our next live stream, we have 20 position trainers. We're going to be training up our main squad. This was our Road to Glory free-to-play squad. So if you guys want to go in there and ask any more questions, we will be streaming on Thursday. Until then, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll talk to you in a bit.